<laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm really setting myself up for failure, aren't I? Oh my god. Before we're gonna get into this video, I just need to show off my outfit because I love it so much. I think it looks so cute. Oh, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Sabine, you clumsy bitch. Oh, just look how adorable. I feel so dark academia. We are here for it. <laughs> Before we're gonna get into this video, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Bookstagrammers.com. Bookstagrammers.com is an online platform that brings brands and their campaigns together with bookish influencers. So then you can think, of course, of booktubers, bookstagrammers, book talkers, and book bloggers. Bookish influencers from all over the world can register themselves, and you do not have to have a minimum amount of followers. And Bookstagrammers.com stands for bookish influencers that create creative content that they finally get paid for the work that they do. It is free to join and everything that you earn from the website is 100% for you. You do not have to like pay bookstagrammers.com any commission or anything. So definitely go check out bookstagrammers.com. I will leave a link in my description down below. I joined the website myself. I am beyond excited. I cannot wait to see what 2021 will bring me, not only through bookstagrammers, but also with the books that I'm going to read this year. So on to the video. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and today I will be talking about all the series that I want to catch up with in 2021. You guys, <laughs> I think I will be talking about eight bookish series that I want to like either finish or catch up with. If you know me, you know that I'm really, really, really bad at finishing series and this year I want to change that. I just want to try this year to catch up with all the series that I am still currently reading. Today I have eight series that I want to talk about with you guys today and I am scared. I honestly do not know if I will be able to do this, but let's find that out next year in 2022. That sounds really strange. <laughs> um where to start? I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the first pile that I have laying down right here, and that is the To All the Boys I Love Before trilogy by Jenny Han. The thing is, and this happens with a lot of these series that I have here on the pile, and that is that I did already read the first and second book in this trilogy right when they came out. So I was like on top of my game. I even reread To All the Boys I Loved Before one or two years ago in order to reread book two and then continue on with the series. As you guys can tell from this video, I didn't do that yet. So my plan is to read a recap of book one, actually reread book two because I know that I really enjoyed John Ambrose McLaren. Is that his name? I feel like that's his name, but I'm not too sure. And I have never, never picked up Always and Forever Lara, G Lara Jean. <laughs> Lara Jean. I said her name like that a couple of years ago, I believe, when I first started reading this series. Lara Jean. But no, girl, it's Lara Jean. I have heard some conflicting opinions about this trilogy and especially how it ends, and I don't know. I feel like I might be on that side as well. I just need to pick up this fluffy contemporary trilogy again and finally put an end to it. <laughs> if you don't know yet, but I would be very surprised about that. To all the boys, oh, this is Always and Forever. <laughs> to all the boys I loved before is about Lara Jean and and she wrote letters to all of her crushes when she was younger and she kept them in a head box and accidentally or in some magical way all of the letters get sent out to her crushes and she kind of has to deal with the aftermath of that. Oh my god, next up, this is a hefty one and that is The Poppy War Trilogy by R.F. Kuang. I read The Poppy War I believe back in August and it even made it on the list of my favorite reads of 2020. Definitely go check out my video about that if you haven't already. And in The Poppy War trilogy we follow Rin who is a dark-skinned peasant girl from the south who lives in this country called Nikara and everyone is kind of against her because of the color of her skin but also because of her gender and she is trying to like flee her life on the countryside so she tries and enters the keiju which is a really difficult test that you need to make in order to get into this really high military academy called Sinigar. She makes it into the school and there she learns a lot about war strategy. She learns also about a magical gift that she has which she didn't know she possessed before. In this country, in this book, you deal a lot with like the gods and a little bit of their elemental magic system and Rin feels attracted to the fire god called the phoenix and Nakara has been on the brink of a third poppy war and kind of Rin is the only person who can sort of save them so it's a really interesting book. It deals a lot with politics and it's also inspired by a real life 
war that happened, I believe, in the 1950s. I don't remember the exact name of that war right now, but it will pop up on the screen right here. So it's heavily inspired by real life events, but it's just an amazing trilogy. And I think it's going to become one of my new favorites. I also just finished reading The Dragon Republic. Look at this book. It's gigantic. I'm so proud of myself for having read voluntarily this 650 page long book. That's just insane. I did not love the sequel as much as the Poppy War, the first book, and I feel like that's kind of an unpopular opinion. I hear everyone saying that this book broke their heart, and I can see why, but I felt like in the first 400 pages nothing much besides political intrigue and stuff like that happened in this book, which did not spark as much interest in me as the last 250 pages. I really really enjoyed those, but I've heard everyone say that The Burning God, which is the last and final book in this trilogy, is is gonna kill you. <laughs> it's gonna hurt you so bad. So I am again really really scared because Rin, our main character, she makes the most morally gray insane decisions that you're just like, girl, like why are you doing that to me? You are hurting my heart. <laughs> Let's do a little promo session here as well because I also want to read Nevermore, Wondersmith, and Hollowpox, which is the third book in the Trials of Morgan Crow series. I believe that in the end this is going to be like a nine book series or at least that is what I could find on Jessica Townsend's Wikipedia page talking about the Nevermore series. And why I'm calling this a little promo is because Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe and I are hosting Wonder Along, which is a read-along for the Nevermore series. Up until so far, like I said, three books are out and we are planning to read those in January, February, and March, each with also some really amazing live shows and discussions, and I hope it's going to be so much fun. This is a middle grade magical series and it is about Morgan Crow, who is cursed, destined to die on her 11th birthday, but as the clock strikes midnight, she's whisked away by a remarkable man called Juniper North and taken to the secret city of Nevermore. There she is invited to join the Wondrous Society. Mystery, magic, and protection are hers if she can only pass four impossible trials using an exceptional talent, which she doesn't have. It sounds amazing. Everyone on Instagram or either on YouTube has told me that I'm probably gonna love this middle grade series and I'm so excited to share this reading experience together with Olivia and all of our amazing guests. So excited! Let's stay in the middle grade category for right now. I also want to catch up with this series by Victoria Schwab. I actually don't know what this city is called but the first book is City of Ghosts and the second book is Tunnel of Bones. Book number three in this series. I don't know how many books are going to be in this one is called Bridge of Souls. I loved the premise of this story. So in City of Ghosts we follow our main character Cass and she can actually like see ghosts and interact with them and it's really funny because her parents are actually kind of like ghost hunters but they don't really believe in ghosts and her parents are hosting a TV show about the world's most haunted places and in this book we follow her story and she travels to Edinburgh I don't know how to pronounce that and I just love the whole vibe of this one. In this book Cass and her family are gonna go to Paris and I believe that in Bridge of Souls they are going to New Orleans. Orleans? Again pronunciation is not <laughs> my best skill. I thought it was really spooky and adventurous and I had a great time while reading them so no doubt am I gonna pick up book number three this year. You guys will I ever finish a Sarah J Mass series? I don't know. I have read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight. I started reading Era Fire four years ago and I couldn't get into it and ever since that year I think Sarah J Mass's books have been on my yearly TBR every single year starting from like 2016 on and I just can't seem to finish her series but trying to make a difference in 2021 by finally finishing the A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. I read A Court of Thorns and Roses then I immediately picked up A Court of Mist and Fury when it came out, pre-ordered A Court of Wings and Ruin and then I felt like it had been too long and that I had forgotten too much of A Court of Mist and Fury. I even, why am I like this? Just with To All the Boys I Loved Before, I reread a Court of Thorns and Roses, started my reread of A Court of Mist and Fury, and then I stopped. Why am I like this? So I'm gonna read a recap 
of A Court of Thorns and Roses because I'm not rereading this book for a third time, okay? And it's definitely not the strongest book in the trilogy. I'm definitely gonna give A Court of Mist and Fury a reread again. I love this book when it came out. I devoured it. I ate it up. I need to be invested in this world and in the characters again and I feel like I'm gonna enjoy it so much. And come on, man, like I totally need to read the conclusion of this series this year. This book looks deceptively small because it is, I believe, 700 pages. So it's actually a thick baby. <laughs> so if you guys would be interested in me vlogging my experience of rereading Akamath and reading Akawar for the first time, let me know in the comments down below. I think that would be a great time. I definitely feel like this is the book series that I want to finish the most this year because it has been on my TBR for such a long time that I just feel so ashamed. <laughs> I have two more series that I need to finish and the first one is What's a Girl Got? do by Holly Bourne. And the nice thing about this trilogy is that it's more like a companion novel series so you don't need to read book one and two in order to read this one. But I have actually read Am I Normal Yet and How Hard Can Love Be in this series. If you don't know Holly Bourne and her work she is a British contemporary author. I loved especially Am I Normal Yet in which we follow Evie who just wants to be normal and accepted by her peers but she has OCD and when she changed schools she just doesn't really want anyone to know and she meets two amazing friends Amber and Lottie and you follow Amber in How Hard Can Love Be and Lottie in What's a Girl Gotta Do. But what I love about this companion novel series is that these are heart hitting contemporaries. The girls each deal with their own type of problem. So Evie has OCD, Amber has kind of like, ooh, there's a big plane outside oh my god he's flying so low okay i'm sorry i'm so distracted but amber deals with like alcoholism i don't know what lottie will have to deal with on a personal level but i just know that i'm probably gonna love this i just really enjoy Holly Bourne's work and I need to read more of it. And then the last series trilogy that I desperately want to finish in 2021 is The Illuminate Files by Jamie Jamie Kaufman and Amy Kristoff. That's not what they're called. By Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I read book one three years ago and then I just didn't continue on with Gemina and Obsidio. The spines are so shiny. But I want to reread Illuminate and then just read the whole series. This is a sci-fi trilogy which is written in a really interesting format. I think a lot of you guys know this already. Woo! That sound. But it's like told in interviews and files and I'm trying to find another interesting page. So yeah, it's just such an interesting format. And despite the books being like five to six hundred pages long, once you get used to the format, you will be able to fly through it. We follow Katie and Ezra and they have just recently broken up. Apparently it's the year 25 75 and two rifle mega corporations are at war over a planet that's little more than an ice covered speck at the edge of the universe. Too bad nobody thought to warn the people living on it. With enemy fire raining down on them, Exes Katie and Ezra, who are barely even talking to each other, are forced to fight their way onto the evacuating fleet with an enemy warship in hot pursuit. But the warship is the least of their problems. A deadly virus has broken out and is mutating with terrifying results. The fleet's artificial intelligence intelligence which should be protecting them may actually be their enemy and nobody in charge will say what the is going on. <laughs> As Katie hacks into a tangled web of data to find the truth, it's clear only one person can help her bring it all to light. The ex-boyfriend she swore she'd never speak to again. So it kind of has the feels of Star Wars and I love Star Wars so much and I've heard just amazing things about Gemina and Obsidio and I believe that even Megan from Meg with Books compared me to the main character of Gemina, which I mean obviously I need to read this book. And that is the last series that I desperately need to read in 2021. Oh my god, no! That's not true. I thought that was the last series that I needed to talk about, but mm -mm. the actual last series that I need to catch up with is the Truly Devious Trilogy by Maureen Johnson. I was obsessed with book one and two in this trilogy. It's the same with everything else here. I read Truly Devious, immediately binged The Vanishing Stare after it, and book three wasn't out yet, so I had to wait a couple of months, and because this is like 
a murder mystery dark academia series, I felt like I had forgotten so many of the details that would be important in order to continue on with the hand on the wall. I believe there's even like a fourth book coming out, which is called The Box in the Woods, I believe. I don't know if it's a continuation of the series or if it's like a companion novel. I have no clue, but I'm really on the fence of like, how should I fix this? Should I just give this whole trilogy a reread because I loved it so much? So I wouldn't be mad about that. I might do that. That would be a lot of fun. It could be a separate reading vlog on itself again. I have so many reading vlog ideas, but I just read books too slowly in order to make them true. So I don't know how many books I need to read in order to fulfill this goal. I'm scared to do it, but you know, we're gonna tackle it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And definitely let me know in the comments which of these series I should prioritize. Maybe you would also like to see some like binge reading, reading vlogs about them in general. That would be so much fun. And I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!